Okay, we're going. Uh, we're going to solve question number one from your uh, exam. So the question says. Uh, a small ball of mass M is moving in a horizontal circle on the inside surface of a frictionless hemispherical hole. The normal reaction force N makes an angle theta to the horizontal. State the direction of the resultant force. When you have a question like that, the first thing you have to draw free body diagram. So all the forces acting on the ball. What are the forces acting on the ball? I have gravity down mg. And I have the reaction force, which is the normal force. And now this one, it comes with an angle. So I break it down to horizontal x and vertical direction y. So horizontal direction, this is adjacent, so it's going to be N adjacent always cosine and perpendicular sine. N sine theta. N sine theta, so I have X and Y, X and Y direction. Y direction, these forces are equal, are balanced. So N sine theta is balanced with mg, so they cancel each other out. Since it's moving in a circular path, so the horizontal force, which is n cosine theta, this will equal f net or the centripetal force. This is the source of centripetal force since we have no friction. Double I on the diagram, construct an arrow of the correct length, correct length of uh, to represent the weight. Okay, let's give a, let's give a number. Let's suppose n is ten newton, and this angle here suppose is thirty degree. Now the value of mg down, I don't know. I need to know what is the value of mg. So if I break down n, this we said is n cosine theta. So if I, if I take it ten cosine theta, and this one, take it, for example, 10 sine the angle theta. If I multiply 10 sine theta, it's going to give me what? 5 in Newton. So if, if n is 10 in Newton, you should draw an arrow to represent mg. It will be half 10. So mg, you will draw an arrow with 5 in Newton. So if this one is 5 centimeter, this will be 2 centimeter length. So when you draw it, it will be shorter. Okay. Yeah. So it will become down and it will be shorter than this. If this is like a 3 centimeter, this will be 1.5 centimeter mg. Okay. Continue with the same question. Show that the magnitude of the net force on the ball is given by this equation. Okay, we draw before this table. We said here this is x and this is y. Here we have n sine theta equals mg. And here we have F, which is the centripetal force, equals N cosine theta. I have tan theta, so if I give this equation number one and equation number two, if I divide equation by one by two, I will get sine over cosine, which will give me tan theta. So I'll divide equation one by equation two, so it will be N sine theta equals mg divided by equation two, so I'll divide this one by n cosine theta, and here is f, n and n, they cancel out, so I'll have n sine theta, it will be tan theta equals mg divided by f. Cross multiplication, so f tan theta, f tan theta equals mg, and I need f, divide both sides, by tan theta, by tan theta. And this is the equation that I need to prove. F equals mg divided by tan theta. 
OK, the radius of the ball is 8 centimeter and the angle is a 22. Determine the speed of uh, the ball. Now, this is the ball. OK. And from the center, from the center of the ball. Till any point, this will give you the radius R. OK. From the center of the ball. Now here I have a small ball, this one. And if I need to know the value of the speed, I can use this equation, which is the centripetal force equals mg divided by tan theta. So the centripetal force equals mg divided by tan theta. And I know centripetal force is mass times centripetal acceleration. So mass centripetal acceleration is V squared over the over R, a distance distance from from the center and this will equal mg divided by t so i have here a force centripetal toward the center now if i need to find this distance r remember we have an angle here so this distance will be r equals capital r which is the radius cosine the angle OK, so M and M, they cancel out. And this one will be R, cosine the angle. I need V, just cross multiplication and then find V. So V square will equal R cosine theta times G divided by tan theta, square root for both sides, and then find V. So just substitute, V will equal 8 cosine 22 times 9.81 divided by then 22, and this will equal 13.4 meter per second. OK, now see outline whether this ball can move on a horizontal circular path of radius equal to the radius of the ball. Of course not. The radius will not equal to the radius of the ball because there is no force to balance weight. I have weight down here. Okay, and it's moving in a circular path. It's moving in a circular bar. So while it's moving, there is no force to balance this weight. So the radius won't equal to the radius of the ball. Okay. Yeah. Now, D now. A second identical ball is placed at the bottom. So here I have a second ball. And the first ball is displaced so that it is it is height from the horizontal is equal to eight meters. So this is eight meter. The first ball is released and eventually strikes the second ball. The two balls remain in contact, determine the maximum height reached by the two ball. Now I have here, the situation is the first ball, I'm going to give this location, location A, and the second ball, I'm going to give it location B. At the beginning, I'm going to use the conservation of energy between location A and location B. The initial energy of the first ball at location A, I have a height, so the initial energy here the initial mechanical energy here is gravitational potential energy because I have height. So for the first ball, when it reach second location just before it hits the second ball, all the gravitational potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy. So from the conservation of energy between point A and point B, gravitational potential energy initial for, bo for ball for the first ball for the first ball 
will equal kinetic energy final. So here I have MGH equals half MV square, same mass. G is nine point eighty one. H is eight equals half times V square, cross multiplication, and then take a square root for both sides. So V will equal square root two times nine point eighty one times eight, and this will equal 12.5 meter per second. This is the velocity of the first ball once it reach the location B before it hits the second ball, before it hits the second ball. Okay, now since the second scenario here, I have the first ball will hit the second ball. And both of them, they will move with the same velocity till they reach a height h. So since they hit and they're going to move with the same velocity, I will use conservation of momentum. So conservation of momentum. Momentum initial equals momentum final. And I have two objects. Momentum initial for the first object, which is the first ball, it will be the mass of the ball times the initial velocity. So here it's move, we said with a velocity equals what? 12.5 meter per second. And the initial momentum for this ball was zero because it, it was, it, it's, it's not moving. Okay, so for this ball is zero. So initial momentum equals final momentum for both ball. For ball one, it will be mass of the ball times 12.5 plus momentum of the second ball zero equals. After collision, both of them, they will move with the same velocity and both of them, they have the same mass. So M plus M and they will move with the same velocity, which I don't know what is the value of this velocity V. Okay. So M plus M, I can say this is 2M, 2M, N and M, they cancel out. So I can find V, the velocity of both of them will equal 12.5 divided by two, and this will be six, 0.25 meter per second. This is the velocity of both balls. Now, after the collision, both of them. Okay, just let me erase this. Okay, now here, after collision, we'll take, we said this is location A, this is B, and both of them, they will stick together now, and they will move till they reach certain height here, and I don't know what is the value of this H. So again, between location B and this, we call it location C, we'll use the conservation of energy. Here, initial energy here, it will be kinetic energy, and here it will be gravitational potential energy. So again, conservation of mechanical energy initial equals mechanical energy final, and this is between location B and C. So between location B and C, both balls, they move with the same velocity, so it will be half M initial velocity square equals M G H for both of them, mass for both of them, M and M, they cancel out. The velocity of both balls, we just calculate this velocity, which is 6.25. So it will be half times 6.25 square equals G is 9.81 times H. We need to find it out. Now divide both sides by 9.81. 
by 9.81 and then you'll find h so h will be two meter h will be two meters and this was the first question in your exam